Hello, Mordorim here. Today with a leveling guide for my Storm and Earth Druid that utilizes the landslide spell as well as a Storm Strike to bring down destruction on industrialization. As always, to make the build function the most basic form, we need to solve 5 problems. AoE, single targets, spirit generation, defenses and mobility. This build guide tackles all of those, providing you with a leveling experience in tune with nature. First, a few explanations for terms used in this guide. Starting with damage reduction. We are going to assume a 100 damage hit is coming our way, and we have 2 times 10% damage reduction in one instance and 20% in another. 10% and 10% will not add up to 20 because they are not additive. The 100 damage will be reduced by 10 first, and the leftover 90 damage will again be reduced by 10, resulting in 81 damage. However, one instance of 20% will reduce it to 80 damage. So the higher percentage is much better. Resistances work very similar to this, but are effectively cut in half because of armor. Next is vulnerability. Once applied by skill, the health bar of an enemy will change to purple, and they will take 20% more damage, meaning it's a damage multiplier. If you have additional instances of damage dealt to vulnerable targets on gear, or the Paragon board in the endgame, you are basically looking at another instance of a more multiplier. Having more uptime on it is exceptionally strong. Lucky hits are next. It's a separate role for each effect and they are not connected to overpower or crits. The chance to apply them depends on the base chance, conditional, skill applying them and your gear. Lucky hit on gear is a multiplier, not an additive increase to the base chance. For a more detailed look at the stat, make sure to watch my lucky hit chance guide. And the last defensive mechanic, Fortify. Barbarians, Druids and Necromancers have access to this one. It's a shiny red layer covering your health globe, which reduces damage taken by 10% for the respective covered area. Having 1000 life and 800 Fortify while taking 300 means 200 damage will lower your health to 800, after which you are fortified. The 100 leftover damage are then mitigated by 10% to 90 damage, which will leave you at 710 life. Next, Overpower. This mechanic has a 3% chance to trigger and works like a critical strike, but scales completely differently. The damage of this proc is influenced by a total life and fortify value at the time of triggering. There are no increases to this chance found on any source. However, some skills have a conditional that guarantees an overpowered hit. The color signifying an overpower hit is blue, crits are yellow and both can be overlapped, which is signified by an orange hit. And lastly, boss staggers. Bosses cannot be CC'd in this game, however, each instance applies a corresponding percentage stagger to the boss and fills up a bar underneath their health. The more CC you apply, the faster it fills. Once it's full, they are going to bend their knee and you can whack them with all you have. The boss will suffer every type of CC during this time, making it possible to benefit from CC based conditional effects and damage increases. Now this build is based on combos and synergies in the druid class, that's why I explained all those terms. Each spell and power we are using brings something to the table that buffs or improves another. We are going to start to Storm Strike at level 2 as our main spirit generator and a very strong defensive tool. This is due to its 25% damage reduction as explained before. Pick up Enhanced Storm Strike next for a slight chance to immobilize targets. This synergizes well with Landslide, which we pick up at level 4. This gives us access to a Spirit Spender. Grab Enhanced Landslide for another potential immobilize and Raging Landslide to combo off of it. One more Pillar of Earth translates to 50% more damage and another hit which is equivalent to a critical strike without any critical strike damage. However, this pillar can still crit, offering us more ways to scale our damage even further. As a quick disclaimer, the base crit chance is 5% and the bonus crit damage is 50%. Primal Landslide sounds like a great option at first since we are guaranteeing a crit, but it nerfs the bonus damage of a crit down to 40% and still requires you to immobilize or stun a target. It also cannot crit again for even more damage. It's just an inferior option. At level 6 you want to grab Fierce Storm Strike for a great way to apply Vulnerable for 3 seconds to an enemy. Next max out Landslide, grab Heart of the Wild and max Abundance for a more spirit generated multiplier for your basic skill. This works only for Storm Strike on this build and stacks multiplicatively with Intelligence, which also increases your total spirit generation by 0.1% per point. We do not want to pick up wild impulses yet, since we are lacking other additional means to generate spirit. At level 16 we want to grab Urban Bulwark and enhanced Urban Bulwark for the unstoppable buff during its duration. Bulwark is a very strong defensive tool that provides you with a strong barrier and can break CC with its upgrade. We can further improve the skill with a codex based legendary power for longer duration and a movement speed buff. 
but it's something I want to discuss a bit later. Next, get Blood Hall for a strong 20% heal and pick up Enhanced Blood Hall for cooldown reduction per kill on this skill. Finish up with Innate Blood Hall for 20 Spirit on use. Clearing packs will make this skill come off cooldown very often, making it an excellent spirit generator and a heal throughout the whole campaign. Next we are going to pick up Trample, Enhanced Trample and Natural Trample for a much needed mobility spell that will generate Fortified when used. The actual skill will also knock back enemies, which is a downside for this build, but it will also provide you with another instance of Unstoppable. And the last skill for this build is going to be Hurricane. Its damage is nothing to write home about. However, it's a great utility spell with Enhanced Hurricane applying a 25% slow to enemies and Savage Hurricane decreasing the damage enemies deal by 20%. We are always near enemies, making it a great pick for this build. To smooth out our spirit generation, we want to pick up 3 points in clarity, which will generate 6 spirit once we transform back to a human after using Trample and Blood Hall. Make sure to weave in another spell in between to benefit from it. Using Trample and Blood Hall back to back will not trigger clarity in between. This passive lets us comfortably skill into Wild Impulses, which further boosts the damage of Landslide. Grab Preserving Urban Bulwark next to finish its tree for a second instance of Fortify Generation. We now have one more skill point left before we can grab our Keystone, which we unlock by picking up Crushing Earth for a bit more damage versus CC'd enemies. This will only work on bosses during the Stagger window, but it will set us up to grab more passives later. The Keystone of choice for this build is Nature's Fury, more specifically the second portion. Using a Storm skill has a 20% chance to make Landslide free which is really good given its high spirit to damage ratio. We are now level 35 with the core of the build ready. And we can start flashing out this bad boy by grabbing 3 points in safeguard to secure a decent amount of fortified generation, making it possible to reach 100%, which will make our overpower procs hit very very hard. Fill out the earth and storm cluster afterwards with defiance for damage versus elite enemies, Natural Disaster for 12% more damage versus vulnerable targets, which we constantly apply with Storm Strike, Resonance for 18% more damage when we use an Earth skill after a Storm skill or a Storm skill after an Earth skill, which we do all the time to generate and spend spirit, and Cycle of Life for a 3% heal every time we landslide. This combined with Blood Hall and Potions should make us nearly unkillable. Next we want to grab a bit of crit versus close enemies with Predatory Instinct. Ancestral Fortitude for 15% non-physical damage reduction, which is a very strong defensive node, and finish up the build with Stone Guard for 12% more damage whenever we are above 50% Fortify, which should be all the time by now. With the tree covered, let's go over Spirit Boons while leveling next. This feature should become available at certain levels, with the first one coming up at level 15. The deer will offer you access to Wariness, which reduces the damage you take from Elites. This one is not much, but it's better than the other option in this tree. Eagle will become available next. Pick up either swooping attacks for 10% attack speed early, or Avian Wrath once you have another attack speed and crit strike chance from gear for 30% additional crit strike damage. The Wolf offers us two great choices with Energize for some additional spirit generation and Bolster to generate 10% fortified every time we use Blood Hall or Urban Bulwark. Snake only offers us one choice with Obsidian Slam, guaranteeing an overpower hit with the next Earth skill we use. Since Earthen Bulwark doesn't deal any damage, it should always apply to Landslide. The Druid class can further pick two boons for one animal aspect. Wolf has two great options with Bolster, but it can become underwhelming if we generate too much Fortify with critical strikes due to Safeguard. In this case, there are two options. Either spec out of Safeguard and pick up Unpronounceable Gate for 9% movement speed whenever you use Blood Hall, or go with Swooping Attacks as well as Avian Wrath instead in the Eagle Tree. Next up, Legendary Powers. Each one can be acquired by completing a dungeon or story quest, which lets you imprint them on gear at the lowest possible roll. None of them are needed to make the build function, but they will boost your power considerably. A disclaimer first, avoid putting aspects into your weapon. You're going to exchange it quite regularly because of your damage scaling with the weapon base damage. You do not want to fall behind in that. The first aspect is Aspect of Mending Stone. This one will extend the duration of Urban Bulwark and its unstoppable buff by 6 seconds and will refill the barrier by killing enemies. A very strong defensive aspect that can be acquired in the sealed archives in the dry steps. The previous aspect can be combined with the Ghost Walker aspect, which increases your movement speed while you have the unstoppable buff. And it even persists after losing the buff for 4 seconds. You also ignore unit collision while benefiting from the aspect. This one works with Trample and Urban Bulwark, which lets you enjoy the speed nearly permanently. You can unlock this one by completing the campaign in Skoss Clan. Both aspects are very strong and should be picked up as soon as possible. 
The aspect of retaliation increases the damage your core skills deal based on the fortify you have. This is very strong once you get your fortify generators up and running. Make sure to put this one into your amulet for a 50% boost to its power. You should grab this one once you come online at level 35 and it can be unlocked in the seaside descent in the dry steps. Now you want to add another aspect to the list, but it's not a codex one. It's just really strong and you should use it on a ring once you find it. The aspect of the aftershock repeats your last landslide cast, but it also increases its damage by 6-12% to per hit. This combos very nicely with the raging landslide improvement and more than doubles your damage. As for gems, use emeralds for 12% increased crit strike damage versus vulnerable targets in your weapon, skulls for more armor in your jewelry and rubies for percentage health in your armor. Lastly, the stats you want to look out for. Disclaimer, more armor and weapon damage is almost always worth sacrificing stats for. However, gaining access to a good item with the right stats can go a long way towards keeping it relevant for longer. Intelligence, willpower and dexterity are all great and very useful to us. Prioritize intelligence for more spirit generation and dexterity for more critical strike chance. As for the other stats, go for critical strike chance, movement speed, cooldown reduction, core skill levels and health on your armor. Cooldown reduction can only roll on helmets and amulets and movement speed can only roll on boots and amulets. So keep an eye out for those. Movement speed also caps at 200%, so you can only add 100% to your build. As for damage improving mods, go for critical strike damage, vulnerable damage, damage versus elite, close and healthy enemies, damage with core skills and earth damage. You can also go for damage versus crowd controlled, but it falls off versus bosses since we only apply it during the stagger window. Overpower damage is also quite useful in this build. Now this sums up my leveling guide for the landslide druid in Diablo 4. I will go into more depth on release with an endgame build guide including the Paragon board. I will discuss it in a theory crafting video because I cannot test it right now. I slowed down this video and went into more detail based on the feedback you guys provided me with, so I hope you like it better now. If you want more of the juicy content make sure to like, sub and comment. And if you want to support me some more make sure to check out my Patreon, PayPal and channel membership. See you next time and bye.